All right, then, if you have your Bibles, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 15, very familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, Gospel of John, chapter 15, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was giving out, really, the final plan to his apostles. Uh, He was going to tell them, uh, kind of toward the end of this, that his days were numbered. Uh, But before he did that, he gave them some encouragement. Uh, You know, uh, being a nurse all my life, I've always heard that. And and it's not just on soap operas. Uh, The doctors do say, I've got some good news and bad news. Which do you want to hear first? Uh, And so the Lord Jesus was giving his apostles the good news first. And then he would follow up with what must come to pass. Uh, John 15, in the very first verse... The Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. And I am you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what it what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for your good word. Lord, we pray tonight that you would open the hearts of your people that are here. Lord, that you would save the lost. We thank you that you are so sufficient if we abide in you. We praise you for that. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, very familiar verses of Scripture tonight. We've all read them, all heard them preached on numerous times. But we're really going to look at the abiding in Christ. Time and time again through this text, he emphasized, ye abide in me. Now, if he gives that command and, and he teaches us the blessing of following through with that, the, the, the opposite has to be true. Just because you're saved does not mean you're abiding in Christ. Amen, that's right. uh, you can be saved and be far from the master. Uh, and making us responsible individually for that abiding, it means it's up to you. Now, as Sovereign Grace Baptists, we want to blame everything on the ministry of Christ, but no, no, even those of you who are not preachers, you have your ministry, and if nothing else, your ministry is this, to abide in Christ, to be close to Him, to be near Him, (coughs) and that takes effort. We'll learn as He is teaching this principle Uh, to his disciples he teaches both the benefits and the risk if you don't that is abiding in Christ now he begins with this I am and if you look at that in your King James Bible it's written the very same way whenever Moses asked the question uh, uh, they won't hear me How how will they know that you sent me and he said just tell them I am sent you Very same thing. In other words, I am is the full embodiment of the Lord God of heaven. Now, in a minute, he'll say, this is my ministry. Christ will say, this part is my ministry, and this part is the Father's ministry. But when he begins this commandment, he says, I am. 
Anytime, anytime that you hear from the Holy Ghost, just remember that's a portion of I am. Anytime you read about Christ, that's a portion of I am. And when we read of the great God Jehovah, that's a portion of I am. And we need to abide in that. You know what's wrong with our churches today? And, and nothing wrong with good, sound Baptist doctrine. That's what we have. But they get hung up on that more so than abiding in Christ. You know, I would whole, a whole lot rather have the presence of the Almighty than run up and down the halls uh, just teaching the tulip, hadn't you? I, I want to abide with the living God. I, I want to be one that, that knows him intimately and personally. You know, uh, uh, Moses got into such a shape, he says, I don't care if I die, I just want to see it. He was abiding in God. That's what the Lord Jesus was teaching his apostles here. I am the true vine. Right. Now, if he says, I am the true vine, what inversely has to be true? False vines. And we'll get to the ones he has to call. But there's a lot of things out there saying Christianity today. Evaluate it. I am the true vine. You know why people want to go to churches where uh, separation is not taught and preached? Because it's not the true vine. You know why they want to go uh, somewhere where they take these little young and Bella's age and even AJ's age and, and run them through a little something? Because it's not the true vine. Yeah. Years ago when me and Donna lived in Dresden, and I won't say who it was because it's immaterial, but th there was uh, literally a sword of the Lord church that we attended a few times, and then we ended up going over to McKenzie and attended another little work over there on Wednesday night. Uh, too expensive to drive back to Bump's Mill, but one time a week. And we were at this church, and there was a young preacher boy there. He's older than me, but we were all about the same age. And they had a little three-year-old child that said he was saved. Now, I'm not doubting the Almighty, but I'm not convinced a boy that age is even convinced of his sinful condition. And you know what? They, that is not the true vine. That, that's something false. That's something that ought not to be. So the Lord Jesus Christ uh, identifies himself saying, I'm the true vine. You better be in me. I am the true vine, and my Father, the Lord God Jehovah, is the husbandman. In other words, he is the keeper. He's the one <laughs> that can judge a real vine, and he can jo uh, judge the fake one. He can see when the fruits are there, and the fruits are genuine, and he can see also when the fruits are plastic, and right. that they're not what they ought to be. See, uh, people can fool a lot of people almost all the time. But listen, dear friend, you're not going to fool God. Right. He knows the difference. You know, I would rather have this small group like this that means business with Amen. God than a bunch of people that don't have real fruit. Right. And, and so we see that when he addresses it this way, in other words, we need to be in Christ if we're going to be in the true vine, and we need to understand every once in a while, we're going to get pruned. Now, the pruning will take you away and identify you for what you are, or it'll increase your fruit. <coughs> it'll increase, it'll increase your, your strength in Christ. Verse 2, every branch, that's us, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he, meaning the God uh, Jehovah, taketh away. Right, right. You get discouraged when people leave the church? I do. Remind yourself of this. It's him that taketh away. We think they get mad, and they do. We think they leave out of being offended, and they do. But who is really the taker? Who's the giver of life? Both life of salvation and the giver of life, Kenny and Abigail's new baby. Who gave that? The Lord God Almighty. You know, the older I get, the more I am uh, amazed at Job's. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And he really meant that. 
And, and more so than his treasures and his family, he knew everything that came, came by God. And then from this verse, we have to say justly so, everything that leaves, leaves by God. Right? If they're not fruitful, they're gone. If they're not centered on the person of Christ, you know what? They're not going to be around long. No stress. Don't be upset about that. It's forewritten. <coughs> Excuse me. Every, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he, meaning the Godhead, the, the Lord God Jehovah taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, uh, <laughs> Uh, pruning a tree is tricky business, and uh, a lot of people don't like to see it done. I, I thought uh, Eric had took this one out this last year, and he says, I'm going to cut her down because it's all going like this. And man, he was faithful to his work. And I thought, well, this wound it up. But you know what? There was more blossoms I had, so I haven't even looked to see if there's fruit on it. With as cold as it's been, but you know what? It looks like it's never been touched. In fact, I think it's fuller than it's ever been. Because it got pruned. It's what it needed. It was what was necessary. You know what? You're not too old to be pruned. You're not too old to be cut back. Uh, none of us do so well wherein we can't bear forth more fruit. There's always room for improvement. There's always room for an increased yield. And so he makes this promise. Number one, you're going to be cold if you don't have any. And if you have some, I'm going to get you and you're going to bring forth more. And then he begins <coughs> and then he begins to tell us in verse 4 the, the necessity. The, the thing that all bearing fruit hangs on. And that's abiding in Christ. That, that is staying near to the Father. That is staying near to the Lord Jesus Christ when things are falling apart yeah. around you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If, if I read this text correctly, it's a choice. Can you decide to be saved? No. Can you decide to abide in the will of God? You betcha. Uh, I've said this for years, and I fully believe it. Most of God's children abide in the permissive will of God as opposed to the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. See, this abiding in Christ is His perfect will. That this is where you give up what you want for what God wants. This is where you lay your Isaac down. When you know the will of God is much better than what you have gotten figured out. Abiding in Christ, being that close to Him, it is crucially important if you're going to bear fruit. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you. <laughs> what came first? <laughs> abide in me. In other words, now you're not going to lose your salvation, but if you don't abide in him, he's not going to abide in you either. He don't leave you in the sense that you're lost, but he'll leave you to yourself. <laughs> remember, remember when David was addressed by the prophet? And he said, who did this thing? Thou art the man. <laughs> See, <laughs> And you know what? David being <laughs> who he was, he repented. He didn't get mad at the prophet. He knew the prophet was right. <laughs> and you know, and so that says to me that he certainly left the will of God. He didn't leave God, but he left the will of God. So here we find in verse 4, Abide in me, and if you'll do that, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of its so, now, we live in a day where stuff that isn't even the fruit of the gospel is just reveled in. Hymenius, in uh, the book of the Revelation, uh, Jambes and Jambres that withstood Moses in the wilderness, you know what? They had a great following. 
We preached very recently uh, the ones that with Korah and his band that withstood Moses. They had their own temple. It says that they stood in the door of his temple, remember? You know what? They weren't abiding in the branch. They never were to start with. And, and you'll find that through, through the years. You give it time and you watch these people that are resistant to this book and you will find out they never abided in Christ to start with. That is the base problem. So he makes it very clear you can't do this on your own. <clears throat> you can't bear except ye abide in the vine. Stay in the vine. Stay in the vine. Now again, if, if he says to stay there, obviously you must be able to leave. You know what? Uh, stay in the Word of God and stay in His church. Abide in the vine. Uh, stay stuck. And listen, it, it's going to be times, you know what? And if you haven't been in this, Jared, if you had not seen this yet, you will. I wanted to leave the ministry. I, I, I have been so sick sometimes, I, I cannot do this again. You know what? Abide in me. You know what? <laughs> It'd be the worst decision I ever made. Sure. Abide in Christ. Abide in his church. Stay where you're at. Abiding when the storm comes on is the hardest thing you'll ever do. Abide in him. Because remember, you're not going to be able to do it except you abide in him. Verse 5. I am the vine. Abide. Stay with Christ. Stay near to him. Remember what he said? I think it was to the church at Laodicea. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now that wasn't for the knock of salvation. That's how the Armenians put it. But whom was he addressing? He was addressing one of the Lord's churches. And you know what? Laodicea wasn't abiding. What did he say to the church at Ephesus? We, we did that, what, Sunday? You've left your first love. Right. They weren't abiding. They weren't staying near. And so we as the Lord's people, if the first century churches could get in such a bad shape, certainly we as the Lord's people can too. Abide in Him. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, shall uh, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Now, we're not judges, but I want you to see here, it says those that are doing the abiding will bring forth much fruit. Now, the sword of the Lord Armenians and Jack Howes and all that bunch, you know what they'll tell you fruit is? It's other people being saved. But is that true? Absolutely not. That's in the hands of the Almighty, <laughs> right? But what does he tell us in 1 Corinthians? Love? Are you abiding in love? Are you producing that? Do you love your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you treat them like you love them? I hope you do because that's the base of base of spiritual fruit is to love. Yeah. Look for it. See if it's there. Love, joy. Man, how many people do you see joy in the day which we live? Oh, come uh, Things are falling apart over, uh, over in Russia. You know what? That place has had war since the beginning of time. And you know what? It's going to keep having war until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. Don't let that steal your joy. We look at the turmoil that our nation is in right here. And listen, uh, we do have a mess. But it ain't going to steal my joy. You know what? I believe before uh, vacation season is over, uh, before uh, September, you're probably going to see gas six bucks a gallon. Don't let it steal, stand your, steal your joy. Can't get no worse than me. I drive a car for a living. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You know what that is about? It's to steal your joy. 
abiding Christ. You know what? When you get terrified and you look at the weather and, and you look at gas prices and you look at the Middle East and, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He has already got your joy. And if I understand this correct, then you're not abiding in Christ. You're abiding in something else. And usually it's our own understanding of stuff. That's where we're abiding. Uh, let me tell you this, the Almighty, who knoweth all things, knoweth a lot more than we do. Abide in Christ. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And you can go over to 1 Corinthians and look at all those other fruits of the Spirit uh, this week. For without me, ye can do nothing. Now, again, that has to get back to how you're measuring things. Don't measure by number. Don't measure by <laughs> finances. Measure by the fruit of the Spirit. Measure yourself first. You know what I have found? If I keep my house cleaned up, that's just a full-time job for me. Uh, and, and you know what? If I'm doing it right, I don't even have an opportunity to look at anybody else. Mm -hmm. Self-checkup. Hard to do genuinely, ain't it? Yeah. You, don't, you don't go and compare yourself to other people. And, and so we find that this body has a huge spiritual impact. It, it can rob us of our spiritual fruit if we're not abiding in the vine. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he, uh, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Right. Now, I want you to see the first thing. <laughs> and remember, the husbandman is not Christ. The husbandman is God Jehovah. And he'll just soon come in there and break that thing and throw it out. Just look at it. The fruit must be there. And they will leave. I will guarantee you. And you know what? It may be a heartache when they leave. Because it may people be people you respected, you had confidence in, that you loved, and all of a sudden they're gone. Listen, they didn't go on their gone on. God broke them off. Remember what, he, remember what Lord Jesus Christ did when he came to the fig tree and found nothing? He cursed it. The next day it was dried up as a tree that had been dead 40 years. You know why he did that? Remember that? Because it had no fruit. There was no fix there for him. Pretty much always been consistent, has it not? If it's not there, uh, it eventually will come out. And that's what he's saying to us here is, huh, you'll get broke off and you'll be cast away. And men gather them, meaning to cast off ones, <clears throat> and cast them into the fire. I do not think that is hell because it says men cast them. I think he's given us an example of how useless fruitless branches are. They're just nothing. Verse 7. If, again, and because those ifs are in there, we can't blame God's sovereignty if you abide in me and my words abide in you. That means get this within you some kind of way. Now, I want you to see that he goes on to tell them uh, it was the words he told him in his ministry because, listen, they didn't have this blessing. Uh, they, they didn't have the written word of God in their hand. So all they could do is remember what Christ says. And he says, listen, uh, you've got to buy, abide in this book, the spoken words of Christ. Abide in them. What does that mean? That means study them every day. That means to rehearse them in your mind. That means to go back and Remember sermons that you've heard to look at some, you know, we have the blessing of recording science today and literally can watch Brother Downs preaching and he's been dead for four years. You know, what a blessing that is. They didn't have it. They said, remember the word, abide in the word. So therefore, when we let it go, 
And Lord be my helper, I'll never give up on this. This is the Word of God for English-speaking folks. And that is getting less and less popular teaching. Mm -hmm. it, it's not, it's not well-received anymore. And, and, and so we see, keep in the book. And if we do this, and if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, the Armenians and the Pentecostals have took that, oh, I'm in the will of God, I want a million dollars. And they don't get their million dollars. But see, if you're abiding in Christ, you know what you want? You want to continue to abide in Christ. In fact, you want a closer relationship with Him. And if you're really abiding in Him, you know what? That's what you'll ask for. Because, you know, when this life is said and done, that's the only thing that remains. The house will be gone. The clothes will be gone. The vehicles will be gone. And all that remain were what you have in Christ. Yeah. Moses understood that, did he not? Abide in me. And so he gives us this promise that if, uh, if we put him first, he will grant it. Herein, in this way, is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. You want to glorify God? Bear much, bear much fruit. And don't be faking about it. Love people. Love, joy, peace. You know what? That's easy to preach about and a lot harder to do, is it not? You know, uh, you have to live it. You have to experience to know it. Jarrett, when you, when you didn't have a job and the money was getting slim, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it's a hard feeling wondering how them three babies were going to get fed, wasn't it? Yeah. You got to live that to understand it, right? But there is peace in it if you genuinely trust Him. Now, if you're only going through the motions and saying the words, you won't have, you, you'll be worried to death. You'll stay up night wondering how them youngins are going to be fed. But if you have a peace, you'll cross up that pillow and you'll lay over and you'll sleep like a baby because of the peace of God. See, that, that comes from abiding in Him. It doesn't come from going through the motions and going through the words. It comes from truly abiding in Christ. So these individuals that do that, these individuals that abide in Christ, they're going to be a happy, peaceable people. I'm going to read this in verse 9 we'll close. Verse 9. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Mm -hmm. Now that's the very word, the first fruit, fruit of the Spirit, love. Right. You know what? We live in an unbelievable day. Uh, I can't stand but sometimes shake my head and almost just want to walk away. Yeah. Love them anyway. You don't have to prove their filthy, stinking sin. But show them love. Yeah. And you know what? That don't mean you run around and say, you know what? I know you're a sodomite, but I love you. That's foolish. You know what the greatest treasure is? The truth. You don't have to go down, you know what? What you're doing is a filthy stink in the nostrils of God. Even though it is. The greatest love you can show anybody is saying, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Amen. Now, we like to put sin on gradients, don't we? Oh, did I, I've done this. I've gotten drunk and sloshed, but I've never went and went to a strip bar. You know, the Lord tells us that sin is sin is sin. One jot or tittle. And listen, we've jotted and tittled 
<laughs> and much, much worse. He says, if, you, if you've even uh, looked on a woman in lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. Yeah. See, that kind of levels the playing field, don't it? Kind of puts us where we all belong, uh, right at the mercy of Christ. Mm-hmm. Do, do you love people? Do you, uh, do you love them enough to say, I know that's what you believe. But let me tell you about the gospel. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, everybody knows uh, Isaac Heim, missionary to Russia, very Muslim nation over there. And he told me this. He said, telling them about the word of God, you were like blowing smoke. Because you know what? They didn't reverent the word of God. But what Isaac learned while he was there is just to tell them what Christ did for him. And it was much more effective. He showed them compassion. He showed them love. And the greatest act of love you can give in the church age is to share the gospel one more time. 